When you're dealing with creatures as intelligent and complex as a honeybee, it can be difficult for a beekeeper to learn all that they need to know. But for retired scientists Jane Cool and Drew Denton, it was a challenge that perfectly aligned with their life philosophy. Learn as if you're going to live forever. Live as if you're going to die tomorrow. So get as many experiences in as you can, because you never know when it's going to be your last day. That mantra, inspired by Mahatma Gandhi, helped Drew and Jane in their respective careers as an electrical engineer and physicist. And when most retirees were looking at slowing down, they had their sights on something busier. Play golf or sit on a beach would be way too boring. I can't imagine that kind of lifestyle, just sitting still. I can't sit still. <laughs> no. No, sitting still is not our game. And so the couple fulfilled a lifelong dream and bought Lost Acre Farm in Bel Air, Maryland. They sold tomatoes, peppers, and asparagus. But when they responded to an ad from a beekeeper looking to keep his two hives on a farm, things really started buzzing. While the bees were here, we'd go out and watch them and just got fascinated paying attention to them. And then we decided that we would be interested in keeping them ourselves instead of keeping somebody else's bees. So then we decided to take the class at Hartford Community College, and we got more and more interested. Started with two hives. I would say it was stressful at first when we first started keeping bees. And so we would be anxious. We'd go out, we didn't know what we were doing, we'd argue. We'd open up a hive to inspect it, and we'd be talking more to each other. Like, did they tell, what were we supposed to do if we saw this? Is this right? No, I think she said do this. And I said, no, I don't think that's right. So at first it was just so overwhelming. It felt like there was so much to learn. After 10 years of beekeeping, the two look back at their initial struggles as a learning experience. But their success is even more inspiring when you learn Drew was bringing in just a little bit of bee baggage. Well, I'm terrified of bees, or at least I was before we started keeping bees, and I'm not anymore, really. I'm in a full bee suit, head to toe, they can't get to me, so I'm not really afraid of them anymore. You know, you gotta fight your fears once in a while. <laughs> Measuring in at just over half an inch, the honeybee is a small creature, but one that has helped Jane and Drew see a much bigger world. They have such a different way, such a different society where they look out for each other. They're willing to give their life to preserve the hive. You'll find that you usually don't get stung by a bee where they're feeding on the flowers. You're going to get stung at their hive because they're defending everyone else. And they have such a short life. An average summer bee lives only six weeks. And they put all that energy into getting, just continuously getting honey. Even if it's overflowing with honey, they just keep going until they literally just drop dead one day. That selfless nature of a bee colony has evolved Jane and Drew's initial intrigue into a love and passion. Before I started keeping bees, I never would have thought about them being cute. And now we think of them as being almost pet-like. And for these pets, early summer is an important time of year. After a springtime spent rapidly increasing the workforce, honeybees are at peak population, totaling anywhere between 20 and 60,000 per colony. Now they leave the hive to gather nectar and pollen to prepare for the winter. And Jane and Drew have worked hard to provide the bees a bountiful buffet. Everything we plant, the decision is if I can plant this or that, which one would the bees prefer? So they do have a source and they don't have to go too far. They'll fly two or three miles if they have to, but we don't want them to use that much energy to have to fly that far. The bees use their proboscis, or a sort of long, hairy tongue, to suck out the nectar that sugary fluid that plants produce to attract honeybees and other pollinators, like their distant cousin, the bumblebee. The nectar will provide them with immediate energy, while the honeybee stores excess in their honey stomach. Back at the hive, it's processed by the enzymes of multiple bees into the delicious sweetener that is craved by creatures of all sizes. The surplus will then be harvested by Jane and Drew. They, they build bridge comb between frames, so I'm trying to break that loose so it doesn't tear the cells either. You have to be focused. You can't be thinking about any, and you don't think about anything else. You're thinking about not harming the bees. You're thinking about what, what do they need, doing things very quickly because you don't want to have that hive open any longer than you have to. Once the frames have been collected, Jane and Drew take them back to their barn where they will remove the wax cappings from the honey. 
Then they'll place the uncapped frames into a honey extractor, which will spin the honey out without destroying the comb. The honey and beeswax will then be used in Jane and Drew's Lumina Honey and Hives products line for soap, candles, and of course, jarred honey. Jane and Drew look at the bees as partners. Happy bees means a happy business. But honey and beeswax isn't the only gift that they've bestowed to the couple. It's extremely relaxing. It just, because you, you have to move slow, you have to be deliberate, and it, it's, it's almost like doing yoga or, or meditating. It's just a different way of looking at life. We nurture these bees and it, it connects you with nature. And whether they're pets, business partners, or flying pathways to serenity, it's always an opportunity for the lifelong learners. Our original mentor when we were beekeepers said, you can be a beekeeper for 10 years, or you can be a first year beekeeper 10 years in a row. And we like to learn something new about the bees every year. It's always something we're trying to push ourselves to learn something new. Life is too short. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm or just click the link in the description.